You know what, sometimes I look at my car and uh, I think there's just not enough carbon. It's too heavy. That's a good one! <laughs> yeah, some of you may laugh, but it's not as, as light as a lot of people think. Like, oh, it's featherweight, whatever. It's still just under a ton, just because of the heavy gearbox and the turbo and everything and beefy cage. Um, when I was doing the first round of Kevlaring, let's let's say the, the wings, the roof and everything. I was always planning to do the rest of the stuff, but obviously I wanted to drive the car for a bit. So the bumper, I reckon I can not only save a few kilograms from doing that in Kevlar, but also it will look nice because the bonnet is Kevlar, the wings, and it's just, it was looking a bit off. Obviously to track the progress and to see whether it's even, it was even worth it, we need to weigh this one. So I removed all the brackets and canards and it comes to four kilos 39. So that's, let's say four and a half kilos. Which is actually not that heavy, but it's still not the lightest. I reckon, I reckon we need to achieve under two kilograms for the front bumper. I think I'm gonna make a mold this time because uh, as a one-off, skinning process there's too many difficult sort of things it will just never peel off so chances are that I'll probably lose the original bumper it will probably crack the molding it so first step is to take the the canards off then all the quick releases those plates that I've put on there the, the thing then we need to clean it wash it uh, polish it then we need to fill all the grooves that we don't need fill the the cutouts with uh, silver silver tape we need to make sure that the all the flexible parts for example here you can see how it flexes doesn't flex because obviously when we apply fiberglass as a mold it shrinks and it kind of warps stuff so if it's really flexible we want to prevent that so i'm not a professional but I've been recommended this technique and I've seen people do it obviously and it worked on the previous stuff. So we fill all the voids and reinforce as much of it as possible as we think should be reinforced. Then when it's all dry I can actually cut it into shape and I can use that to actually attach my flanging, uh, flanges for because obviously we want to cover this area as well. Um, it will just be a lot easier if we just literally just when we make a mold it will be a complete unit and then I can just sort of cut it out from the inside so yeah it will be a lot easier to literally just attach to to the foam the, the flange itself uh, same goes for this part this part is actually quite quite flexible so I'm hoping by putting something at the back it will sort of hold it this way but even if it doesn't again because of the foam it will be easy enough to literally just put something in there and just tie it with a string or something so it kind of retains its shape it will be a lot easier for me to make sure it's it's straight as in like it would be on the car I'll just basically I'll make a jig out of some uh, used wood and plywood and I'll attach that to that because I was thinking because obviously I have quick releases which are one here two in the center one on the side so if I was using those then I will either be a bump then it will be more difficult to remove that afterwards so it's a lot easier to just literally make a little uh, wooden frame put it on frame and then mold it from that. So let's wait for it to dry. Let's flange it and um, almost done. 72 hours late. I know exactly why this stuff costs so much money. I mean, custom carbon fiber work and skinning and all that. Literally almost took me, I don't want to say two days, but a day and a half on and off just to prep this bumper for, for the mold. I'm doing it kind of properly this time because obviously I want to mold so I can replicate it or just to get a really bad, uh, better, better, better quality because obviously skinning is good one off for really sort of simple items for something like a bumper I don't think it would have worked perfectly so everything is flanged everywhere around all the holes are sort of filled with the metal tape I waxed it already with one one layer um, we need to wait 15 20 minutes then wax another one then we need to buff it then we apply PVA release agent and again this is not PVA glue it's PVA release agent I've simplified it ever so slightly uh, on the original bumper as you can see here the lip is a lot bigger there is no need for this lip I actually want it to be a little bit flexible so we're making this lip a lot a lot smaller 
um, also we obviously filled the main gaps they will be they will be cut out uh, at the end and then here because I actually have my kick plate or whatever you want to call it for to cover the tires um, basically where the, the the front splitter goes so that's going to be molded into the bumper itself so it actually almost acts as a flange so then the once we um, cut it here that will be sort of one seamless shape from from the bumper so we don't need to put any extra bits on it saving weight because this is still well debond but I don't know I mean they're small pieces but that's another 50 grams we don't need the next morning this time in order to make a mold I'm using uni mold system um, obviously sold by easy composites again link I'll leave down 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 below so you can do it yourself it's a very easy kit um, almost no shrinkage no nothing you get three pieces in a, in a thing so you get a gel coat this is what we have here so it's two coats um, about 0.4 mil each coat you let it dry um, preferably overnight I mean that's what I did anyways because I just didn't have time and now it's ready for its coupling coat coupling coat is basically like a middle coat with a thinner weight um, fiberglass so 100 grams 200 grams um, you apply one one coat of that put your fiberglass on top and that basically helps stick the main reinforcement your four or five layers of the thick stuff to the gel coat itself wait for three four hours before it sort of gels and then we can apply normal normal gel coat um normal resin which is this tooling resin five kilograms should be enough i mean i've calculated that's about 0 0.8 square meters ish so hopefully hopefully should be enough i have some other resin so i'm sure it wouldn't be too much of a problem if I completely run out um, to have another few layers on top afterwards after it dries but it should be enough for three four layers um, yeah let's mix the coupling coat cut some fiberglass and we can apply the first coat I don't bloody learn run out obviously I mean I kind of thought I would um, but I run out by quite a bit um, also I don't know why when I was ordering it I didn't order the 100 grams even though I did say it in the video that's what you need I thought I had 100 well I thought I had it but it turns out I think I had 300 grams from a previous mold uh, mold making which is a little bit too too thick and it's just such a pain to put it in there and that's probably why I ran out because it requires a lot more resin I had some spare from previous casting this is just normal polyester it should be okay it's not ideal and we're kind of mixing and you can probably see this is where unimold sort of went on it's nice sort of uniform color and then this sort of polyester resin uh, you see it's a little bit at the end of the day resin fiberglass makes up a mold so it's not perfect but it's not like we are running a production and we need hundreds of those copies we only need one so fingers crossed let it dry for four or five hours most likely tomorrow we can actually apply another three four coats of proper stuff and um, then yeah it's ready. <laughs> Wow. 
running out like nothing like nothing else so it's like there's no tomorrow one and a half coats of main reinforcement and i'm almost yeah probably one quarter of the of the resin left um not enough i don't think i have enough material reinforcement the main fiberglass i don't have enough resin because we need four layers and i have one and a half ish because i reinforced it more in this area this area this area luckily you can once you do it sort of all in one go one or two layers you can leave it and then you need to let it set properly and then you can reinforce it more so i'm gonna leave it for today i'm gonna go and order more of this every time every time i try to save little pennies and either cut too short or just not buy enough i mean I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, why do you need any sort of... Uh... Anyways, enough chit chat. Let's order some more. Let's wait for it to dry and make another few. After about uh, a week, a week and a half, yes, it took me this long. Few reasons. I kept buying um, insufficient amount of resins. So we basically used up two five kilo tubs of Unimold for the main resin. And then I used up the rest of my old one. So it's, it's a bit of a mishmash. Most of it though is correct how it's supposed to be done. But then in few places like here, for example, one of the last layers, that I had to reinforce on top because remember this is a mold so it needs to be as thick as possible and to retain its, its shape so you need at least five layers well four layers of actually I'm not going to bore you with all this the important thing is it's done all the layers are there and now it's time to demold I think this is going to be the most difficult task for a few reasons and one of them being the the air ducts as you can see they go quite deep inside but what we can do i'm sure you'll see on the on a time lapse we'll use a little um mallet and just chop this thing out but the good thing is i've used pva release agent the good thing about that is that i think i mentioned in one of my previous videos you can actually spray it with water because it's water dissolved dis soluble water dissolvable so if you sort of peel the, the corner and just spray it with water, the water sort of gets in there and dissolves it and gives you a really nice and easy release, theoretically. Anyways, let's demold it. Mm -hmm. 